Have you ever wanted a podcast that did it all? Sports, politics, world events. Well, you have come to the right place because you are listening to CNC Talks. I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. And welcome to episode three of CNC Talks season two. Just a reminder, we talk about every week. We release on Tuesday and we talk about politics, world events, and sports. It is currently Tuesday, January 17th, 2023 at about, well, it's, it says one, but it's, it's four um, p.m. Pacific time. And coming up on this episode, we're going to dive into the Biden document scandal, the NCAA championship, the NFL playoffs, and a whole lot more. So make sure that you stick around until the end. So let's start off with politics. Uh, first off, uh, with the classified uh, documents found at Biden's house. There was about two dozen documents that was found um, at the Penn Biden Center and Biden's house in Delaware. There's no evidence that he actually knew that the documents were there uh, to begin with, and it is not a crime if he did not know that they were there. Yeah, however, I mean, no matter what, somebody made a significant mistake and a dangerous mistake too, right? This is classified information. These are our nation's top secrets. They should be... Uh, in the government's hands, they weren't in the government's hands here. So whether it's Biden, whether it's actually on Biden personally, uh, remains to be seen. At this moment, I would guess that the answer is no. But somebody, somebody really messed up here, and they deserve to face some consequences, whatever those may be. And how are these documents uncovered in the first place? Yeah. So. Uh, his attorneys um, were just going through the Penn Biden Center just to go through all of his papers, just I believe is just a routine thing. Uh, and they found these documents. Um, there's documents, by the way, not from not from his time as president, but from his time as vice president. Yes, and to, they for found those who didn't them. No, he was uh, the vice president for Barack Obama. For Barack Obama, and then found it, and then they immediately reported it to the National Archives, which is what you are supposed to do in that circumstance, and then um, they uh, volunteered to search Biden's other uh, offices and residences to try to find additional documents, um, which were then discovered. Um, and it's good that they were discovered, obviously, significant national security issue. Yes, however, this is very different from Trump's document scandal. Trump had over 300 classified documents. Biden only has around 30, isn't it? Around yeah, somewhere in the 30 there. range. Um, and he also tried to hide them from those investigating him and ignored subpoenas for the documents. So it is, they, are, they have similarities, but also they are very different instances. Yeah, and then uh, Merrick Garland appointed a special counsel to oversee the investigation into the documents. Very, which probably the right decision by Garland because he probably should not personally be involved in the investigation, being appointed by Biden. Um, and, of course, similar to what Garland did for Trump, who just two days after Trump announced his run for the presidency, appointed a special counsel to oversee all of the Trump-related investigations at the Justice Department, of which there are many. Yes, and we also have some news from the Missouri House of Representatives. Can we get some more on that, Colin? Yeah, so there's a really weird rule in Missouri um, that Republicans have put in place in their state house that's requiring women to wear sleeves on the Missouri House floor so they cannot expose their arms. And to me, Charlie, this feels a lot like what the Taliban does, basically. Yeah, it is interesting to see this, but um, it, is, it certainly comes as a surprise. I don't um, agree with it. And it, I, I think it's, it, it's really in, it crazy because, of course, there's women in the Missouri House of Representatives who voted for this. Who voted I, for this. And also, all these Republicans who say, like, well, we're not going to wear masks because we have our rights, right? And now they are taking away the rights of women to not wear sleeves when... It doesn't, who cares whether someone wears sleeves or not? What, Why is that relevant to anything? What was the final vote total, by the way, on that, if, if you know? I don't know the exact numbers. Okay. We also now have some news out of New Mexico, where there has been several shootings at Democratic lawmakers' homes and offices. Uh, Republican Solomon Pena has been arrested for the shootings. He's a failed uh, Senate candidate um, from this year, I believe. Uh... Yeah, this year, uh, yeah, state state legislature. And he is accused of paying people to shoot at Democrats. 
Yeah, and he's, his justification for this, apparently, is that the election against him was rigged. And I mean, Charlie, starting to see, I mean, to the extent that we haven't seen it before, that people's words have direct consequences. Like, right, thank God no one got killed in this. Yeah, I think we're very lucky that no one got killed. Exactly. So let's move on to world events now. Um, from the UK, Prince Harry's new book came out. It makes many revelations about his life and the royal families as well. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this, about how, uh, how Harry and Meghan have been treated and how they've treated others? First of all, I think it's really funny how you said from the UK, given that they now live in Los Angeles. Well, yeah, but it's news from the UK. Yeah, fair. Um, Harry and Meghan um, have been treated absolutely terribly by the, by the British press. And I get that there are two sides to, this, to every story, but... The British press has a lot of issues. I could make an argument that that uh, mainstream British press is more racist than uh, the American press. Um, there could definitely be there, an argument. I this, mean, yeah. especially, I mean, look at with sports after the 2020 uh, 20 Euro, which was, of course, played in 2021 after those uh, black players missed those penalty kicks, how the British press just went in on them. Yeah, uh, for, and for those who didn't know relentless. England. Yeah, for those who didn't know, England lost to Italy in the finals on penalties. I was actually watching that game. I mean, of course, it was on penalties that yep, they lost. Yeah, because England um, can only lose on penalties. England can only lose on penalties, correct. But, yeah, um, the British press just treating them horribly. And, frankly, I would have probably done the same thing if I was in Prince Harry's position, right? I wouldn't want to be a part of that. And it's, Charlie, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think they've been treated very badly by the British press. And it is interesting. I haven't read their new book, but I do think it would be a, uh, definitely a worthwhile read to see, get, get some of the insight into the family itself. So let's move on now to some news from the Dallas Zoo. A, cl a uh, clouded leopard uh, escaped um, its cage. <laughs> um, the zoo had uh, had to close, actually. It was found later that day near the enclosure, and there were no injuries, luckily, but it caused quite a fiasco online. Yes, it did. Um, and, yeah, thank goodness it was found later that day, and uh, no one died, uh, or the, including the leopard. Yeah, that um, is lucky indeed. Um, now... For those for for those sports fans, I we know that we ha we don't talk about the NBA and NHL very much. We will be talking about them more uh, next week and in the coming weeks as well. Just a reminder: you're listening to the CNT Talks podcast. Thank you for listening. Yeah, and again with the NBA and the NHL, um, right? Those leagues now getting into s second half of their season, a very exciting time, especially in like in a variety of playoff races. And then as we get into the playoffs in a couple of months, that's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah, and we will have a couple of guests on in the next few weeks the to next talk few about weeks those. To talk about that. First guests of the new season, I believe. Yes, they are. So let's move on to sports. On Monday, the NCAA fo fo football championship uh, with Georgia destroying TCU. It's back-to-back -back titles for Georgia. So is Georgia the new standard for college football? Have they replaced Alabama? I mean, yeah, it was definitely Alabama and it was Clemson, right? Yeah. Those were kind of the two standards, I'd say, Alabama and then maybe Clemson slightly behind. It's now Georgia, and especially, I mean, Alabama, it's not like Alabama's been bad the last couple of years. Alabama this year still won, I believe, 11 games, including a bowl game. Yeah, and, and they almost made yeah, it as well. And Clemson, I believe, winning uh, also 11 games, I believe, not winning a bowl game, but they did win the ACC championship. Of course, the Clemson's playing in a much weaker conference. Yes, but, they are. But Georgia, I mean... Come on, they they just went fifteen and zero against uh, what is clearly the best conference in college football. And right? They beat teams like Tennessee. They going on to the playoffs. They beat Ohio State and TCU. It had some other big wins well, in the regular season. TC. They probably shouldn't have beaten Ohio State. Ohio but. State probably not, but they were still at the very least put in a position where they could win that game by the miss kick by Ohio State's uh, kicker. Yeah, and I think the key to Georgia's success is mostly down to Stetson Bennett. He's, an ama he's been amazing for them. So is he among the greatest college football players ever? I mean, it's hard to say anything else. It's, it really is just difficult to say anything else when he's 4-0 he's in college football playoff games over the last two seasons. I believe he won Offensive Player of the Game in all of those. I would not be surprised if he did. And... I mean, 
as we've seen, the end of his college career and some major questions as to his future, uh, whether he'll actually be able to be successful in the NFL. I do believe that he had one of the best careers in college. And we will see where he ends up. Yeah, I think he's projected right now to go somewhere in the third or fourth round of the draft. Hmm. Um, we shall see. There's, there's a lot of teams that could use a quarterback in the NFL right now. Of course, some big names at the top of the draft, such as C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. Um, some other names as well. Yep. And speaking of the NFL, the NFL wildcard weekend was this past weekend. Uh, we shared it on Saturday in the afternoon with the 49ers beating the Seahawks. The Seahawks led at halftime, but a forced fumble uh, by, the offensive, by the defensive line really gave the 49ers a big advantage, which they didn't give, ba- uh, which they didn't give back. Yeah, and I mean, s- it was a closer game than it looked, though, it, and it but was. that was definitely the momentum turner. It was. So and what do you think next for the Seahawks as they go into the offseason? Well, I think the key for the Seahawks is going to be using that top five draft pick from the Broncos effectively, as well as their own pick. Which I believe is the 18th. It'll be the, the 20th pick, I believe, in the draft. Uh, the um, Dolphins and Ravens ahead of us. Uh, I think it's the Buccaneers, actually. Oh yes, yeah. no, you're 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 correct. Um, I think the though the bigger story from um, that Saturday was the Chargers melted again, from up 27 nothing to losing 30 to 31. Yeah, just a complete meltdown, like you said, by the Chargers and. Who do you think deserves the blame for this? Staley. Just Staley. No, Staley, their defense wasn't working, and Herbert couldn't get anything done. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is really a complete team blow-up. Um, the defense just completely blew up in the second half, but the offense also blew up in the second half. And here's a question. How do you, how do you lose a game in which you have a plus-five turnover differential? Herbert did basically nothing. He got the ball with great field position most of the time. They had five turnovers. Uh, Just, he did nothing, and he deserves a lot of the blame. But, like you said, Brandon Staley deserves a lot of the blame. He is, in my opinion, the worst coach in the, that co- the worst head coach in the NFL this year. Yes, Jeff Saturday, you are a better coach than Brandon Staley. Just because of this week, or? Just in general, I mean... Everything And it looks like somehow he's going to survive this. He's going to keep his job as the coach of the Chargers. But, I mean, think back to last year, Charlie. Yeah, um, with that he, game against the Raiders. He that called, was a miserable he called timeout. that timeout with, what was it, 38 seconds to go. I believe it was. And all that he would have had to do to make the playoffs was not to take the timeout. And he would have made the playoffs. Yeah. But he took a timeout, like the playoffs. That alone should be grounds for being fired. Now some of his poor decisions, as well as decisions with Mike Williams to play him, no, knowing about his injury history in week 18, what a shocker that he gets injured again. He's now he was going to be out for the entire playoffs. Well, for the Chargers, that was only one week. Yes. And then sun- the s- Sunday's, Sunday of his morning game was the Bills and Dolphins, with the Bills beating the Dolphins by three. Um, is the closest of this game a, really a concern for the Bills? I mean, I think it is. Skyler Thompson is, I mean, he actually did play pretty well, I thought. Uh, overperformed my expectations for him. But, but what were your expectations of him? Zero. Um, so, but yes, I do think it was slightly concerning for the Bills, especially we'll get into in a minute. They'll, they'll have a very tough task next week against the Bengals. Um, but I'm more curious about the Dolphins, Charlie. Do you think that they can continue with Tua? I mean... If he's, they had two, he, they would have won the game. Fair, but also, is is the concussion thing something to worry about going forward? It's not his fault. It's the offensive line. If you're letting your guy get get um, take that many hits in in the backfield, you got to fix your offensive line first. All right, that, that's a that's a very valid point. Um, the Giants beat the Vikings. Um, you have the floor. What did I say? I believe we said it last week. I had the Giants going all the way. Oh no! What I said, what I said, was that the Giants were either or th- that the Vikings were either going to win by like three or lose by like thirty. No, that's not what happened. They lost by like seven, but it's still the same. They still lost, and Kirk Cousins still, I believe, does not have a playoff win. And in his Justin career. Jefferson got clamped. Jefferson, yep. The entire game. The Vikings didn't look very good. The Giants looked pretty good. Daniel Jones had an amazing game, which is surprising because it's Daniel Jones. But hey. Um, I said the Vikings were going to win. Uh, the Giants were going to win, and they did. Does Kirk Cousins have a future with the Vikings? I, I think he does. 
I think he does. I think the Vikings were better than this game showed, and I think they're definitely going to win. The, they're going to be uh, kings of the north for a while. Yeah, I mean, although we do have the Lions on the rise, um, the Bears, I think, are still a few years away. And the uh, Plumbing Packers. The, 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 Bears, the Bears, I think, could be good if they, you know, followed through with anything that they want to wanted do, but I think it'll just be... A completely botched rebuild, and I think they're gonna. Pro- they might actually trade that first round pick away. I could see some some someone like um, the Colts, for example. Yeah, Indy they, might go for it. They want to. Uh, they want to pick. Here's an idea: scare the Texans into thinking that they're gonna pick Bryce Young, and so that don't. the Texans trade up to, for that pick, and you get like a gazillion other picks. All right, I can also see like a team that's worried about their quarterback. Like contract, like I could see maybe Jackson going to Chicago and the Ravens getting that pick, for example. There's a there's a lot of possibilities. Speaking of that, the Bengals, they beat the Ravens, and while that was a wild game, I think that the bigger thing, Charlie, is Lamar Jackson, especially since it sounds like um, he maybe was would have been willing to play if he had a new contract, and also that he didn't even travel to Cincinnati with the team. Yeah, that Does he have any future with the Ravens, or is that just a Not done after that. He's done. He's done. And I actually, if I was a, um, if I was looking at this, if I was uh, um, on the management staff of a team, I wouldn't want him. If that's no, how he's going to react in a contract year, that's I, don't, disgusting. I wouldn't want him. That's, yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, and on the Monday night game, the Cowboys beat the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers looked terrible. Looked terrible. Yeah, completely terrible. Um, but did the Cowboys look like a Super Bowl team? They didn't, mainly because I don't think that they're going to win next week. Well, that's true. I think that if they had played that game against, say, the Eagles, then sure, then we should immediately start talking about them as, like, potentially Super Bowl favorites. On the other which hand... Which is what Jerry Jones yeah, was doing. Which is Exactly. On the other hand, the Buccaneers... Are or a are a bottom half of the league team that managed to squeak into the playoffs. Well, you have to remember that eight wins, but they got to play the the rest of the NFC South six times, and they st- and they and still how only many of those scraped. Games did they win? I don't know, but they still only scraped away from the season eight wins. They got to they played the Packers this year. They uh, they got to play the Rams and the Cardinals this year, and they just. They can't win. So I think the bigger question of this Buccaneers terrible season, is Tom Brady done? Is it finally time for him to stop? I mean, it's time. Do I think he will stop? Uh, that's kind of 50-50, I think. I could see that going in either way. But what do you make of the Buccaneers' season as a whole this year, especially looking towards next year? If they don't have Brady, they don't have basically anything and even if they do have Brady that's still a team that's going to be struggling to contend yeah I do think if Brady's done which I do I do think he is um then I think that they're going to need to completely rebuild maybe might they might even try to get rid of Mike Evans for some draft picks and just fully enter rebuild mode I wouldn't get excited about anything yeah. in Tampa at the moment I mean here's the thing also I think that if Brady uh does not retire given the state of Tampa Bay right now he's going to go somewhere else I mean, his, I believe his contract Las is Vegas. up. Uh, yeah, no, there's plenty of options for Maybe him. Even Miami. New, New Orleans is a possibility that I've heard. I, I wouldn't see. I don't see him doing that. No, I see, that he was with the Bucks for three years. It does seem unlikely, but there, there's a lot of possibilities for him. Um, of course, when he retires, he can look forward to that three hundred and seventy-five million dollar paycheck from Fox Sports for him to call good games for them for the next decade. Yeah. So now that the wild card round is over, let's look forward to the division divisional week for this week. Uh, Jaguars, Chiefs, Giants, Eagles, Bengals, Bills, and Cowboys, Niners. Yeah, what, what do you do got? You... Got the Chiefs, although I think it's going to be a lot closer than some people expect. Um, yeah, what do you just in general? What do you think about that game? I have the Jags. I don't know why. It's just that every single time I say something really dumb that shouldn't work, it happens to. All right. And also, if you're thinking about momentum, the Chiefs had a pretty good game. In the final week of the season, they beat the Raiders. It was surprisingly close. Yeah, that's considering 14 how bad, days off, though. Considering how bad the Raiders Saturday, are, they've that's had 14 days, days off. off. So that really, they've, they've, they're basically neutral in terms of momentum. Coming back from down 27 nothing and flattening some, a, a team, that's got to give you some confidence. Gives you some confidence. Also, here's a fun fact for you. Trevor Lawrence, in his high school career, college career, NFL career, never lost a game on a Saturday. And I think that's going to continue. They're going to the AFC Championship game. That would be incredible. I don't. I don't think I agree with Giant. you. I think that that streak will end, but we'll see. And Doug Peterson's going to pull something out of the hours. 
He, he may. He may. All right, Giants, uh, Eagles. It's going to be the Eagles again in a tighter game. Um, I'm thinking back to last year's divisional round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I don't think it's going to be quite that good. I mean, we all remember just how good that weekend of football was. Oh, that was uh, amazing. I don't think it's going to be quite that good, but I still think that we're looking at a really good weekend of football here. Uh, I, st I, I do have the Eagles, though. Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback. I don't know if... I, I don't think that the Eagles are... I think that the Eagles will probably lose to whoever wins that Cowboys 49ers game that we'll get to in a minute, but I do think that they have what it takes to beat the New York Giants. If Bengals-Bills goes down to a coin toss again, I am going to lose it. Hey, well, you know there's new overtime rules. Oh, is there? Yeah, we just never saw them in effect in this round of Did the they playoffs, go with the college system? But no, not the college system. It's just, just for the playoffs. Uh, the overtime rules, uh, both teams get a chance to possess the ball, uh, even if the team that possesses it first scores a touchdown. Oh, that's good. They should just implement that in the entire league. I know. They should just implement that in the regular season. It's kind of ridiculous that they I don't. I have the Giants. You have the Giants? Yes. Wow. I have them okay. winning the Super Bowl okay. against the Jaguars. Okay. Do you have the Bills or the Bengals? I have the Bills. I got Bengals. We are just going opposites today. We're going all opposites I, today. What are you thinking about I'm the thinking, last one? The, the Bills had a, good, had a pretty good game. I think their game was closer than it probably should have been. And the Bengals probably shouldn't have won their game. No, they probably shouldn't have. I mean, also, Lamar Jackson is a great quarterback. Mm -hmm. and I, I, they, I think they would have won that game on the field. I, I oh, genuinely I think the Dolphins would have won if they had Tua. Well, well, here's the thing. I think that with Tua, the Dolphins still are not as good of a team. As, as the Ravens as, are? No, as the Bills are. But I think that... A Ravens team with Lamar Jackson is a better team than the Bengals are. Now all they need is a wide receiver not named Mark Andrews, who's a tight end. Uh, yeah, fair. Uh, but yeah, I, I got the Bengals. Um, and then Cowboys Niners. Cowboys Niners, who you got on this one? This is close. I know. I'm going 49ers. I think CMC is going to run in the game-winning touchdown. I think that game's going overtime. Okay, finally... We do not disagree on one. You're going for an Niners. I'm going. I'm going. I, I don't want them to win, but, but I, I don't want the Cowboys to win. to win either. I wish they could both lose, frankly. Yeah, I I, I wish that we could have a Giants Eagles uh, NFC Championship game. Although, still, there's better. So, Charlie, of the teams in the divisional round, three of them are uh, from the NFC East. Of in. Three of the four from the NFC in the divisional round are from the NFC East. Now, where's that final uh, um, NFC East team? Uh, under eight investigations, that's where they are. Yep, and they have Taylor Heineke. you got to think that that's another team that's looking for a new quarterback this offseason. Yeah, Heineke played well. Did he play well enough, though, to keep his job? Uh, for a, uh, Especially the team that undoubtedly wants to make a push forward. This is the team that thought Carson Wentz was a good idea. That's I fair. don't trust them at all. I mean, it sounds like, though, they will probably be under new ownership next year, thank goodness. Yeah, l luckily. <laughs> oh, you you luckily. Know, you know, I guarantee you, this is going to end up with a Chief, with the Chiefs-Bills rematch in the AFC Championship game again. As much as I don't want it, it's going to happen so, again. And that, would, that would be in Atlanta, Allen's by gonna the way. Allen's going to lose again. Be in Atlanta. The, the Bills have had success against the Chiefs. Until January rolls around. I hate coins. <laughs> All right. Speaking of coins. Speaking of, speaking of luck. Um, and coins. And coins. Uh, Mega Millions jackpot was $1.35 billion um, won by somebody in Maine. Uh, second largest Mega Millions jackpot in history. Fourth largest lottery jackpot in history. Charlie, three of the five largest lottery jackpots in history have been in the last six months. Inflation. Partly, I would imagine, but uh, yeah, that is interesting, though. It is interesting. Um, I don't really know what to make of it any further, though. So we'll end our episode there. All right, <laughs> um, sounds good. All right, uh, make sure that you subscribe. Episodes every single Tuesday available wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, make sure to visit our website, cctalks.net, which has everything that you need to know about the show. Also, call us with questions: three six zero three eight nine two six three zero. Again, that's three six zero three eight nine two six three zero. Also, follow us on Twitter at CC Talks Podcast. For our producer, Morris, our production designer, Zach, and our proof editor, Drake, I'm Colin. Hey, I'm Charlie. See you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.